Welcome to the series where I test out money making methods from the OSRS wiki. Feel free to leave suggestions on which money maker you'd like to see next. And also, if you didn't already know, I have a nice playlist that I've created that has all of the previous money makers that I've already tried. So go ahead and check it out if you haven't already. With that being said, let's get into the video. So for this video, I thought we'd go ahead and try out smithing rune items. Now I do want to state in the very beginning that this is a very high requirement. You do need 99 smithing for this, but some good news, it is a free to play money maker. And some even more good news, it is a pretty AFK money maker. Once you have 99 smithing, this can be a very viable and AFK way to make money. I was aware of this as a moneymaker while I was going for the 99 smith cape myself. While grinding for that, I saw a lot of people training at Varrock, and a lot of them were talking about how smithing rune items was actually pretty decent money, and one of the guys there was even going for 200 mil by smithing rune items, so I thought that this would be a nice time to make this video. Now there are a couple options that you can choose to smith. There are the rune two hand swords, the rune plate legs, and the rune plate skirt, but as of right now, Whenever I checked the prices, the Rune Two Hand Swords were the best to smith. Before trying out this moneymaker, I was going to go to the Varrock Blacksmith area to smith the Rune Two Hand Swords as you see right here. This was the location that I trained the last bit of levels that I needed to get 99 smith. And this is the spot that I was going to make the Rune Two Hand Swords at. But I read on the wiki that there is actually a better spot with the release of the new city Priftinus. The wiki stated that the anvil in Priftinus is actually closer to the bank and it is about two ticks faster than the one in Varrock. So for this video, I used the one in Priftinus. And since you pretty much have to have 99 smithing to even do this moneymaker, there's a good chance that you will have this quest completed, which is Song of the Elves. And if you don't have it completed, that's totally fine. The anvil in Varrock is not that much slower, so don't worry about it too much. The Varrock Anvil actually has the benefit of being a free-to-play area. Like I said, this is a free-to-play moneymaker. So even if you don't have membership, you can actually just hop over to Varrock and make some money there in free-to-play. Now, as for the gear setup, I am bringing my full graceful outfit just to help with the stamina. I think even if you don't bring it, you still have a good chance of not really running out of stamina just because you're waiting a long time at the Anvil while you make your rune two-handed swords and you wait a little bit at the bank whenever you're banking, but it's not that much of a boost. Still, I brought the graceful just in case, and in my inventory you see the hammer which you use to make the items, and the runite bars will take up the rest of the inventory. It works out perfectly to where I have 27 runite bars, which allows me to make 9 rune two hand swords. So even if they added an update where you can use the Dragon Warhammer as a hammer to smith, it really wouldn't benefit you in this case because that one runite bar that you would have in place of the hammer wouldn't let you smith anything else. So we're good. Now as for the bank setup, like I do with a bunch of my videos, I will be using bank fillers just to organize the bank a little bit easier. I like to put the items that I'm grabbing on the bottom right just so that I can click on them faster. It's really close to my inventory, so it'll just speed up banking. And also, if you want to remove the placeholder for your hammer, you can use the deposit inventory button and your hammer will not go in there as long as you have a bank filler in place. But since we have the all option, we can just click on that to deposit all of the items and we don't really have to worry about the deposit inventory button. So in this case, the bank fillers are just being used for faster banking. And with kind of a recent update, there is also an all option on the smithing inter interface. So now we can just one click smith a full inventory of rune two hands, which is really awesome. And as you saw me do here, I put a screen marker over the rune two hand item just so that I know where to click. I mean, after a while you won't, you won't really need it because you'll just know where to click, but screen markers help every now and then whenever you're mindlessly clicking away. And that is pretty much all you need to know for this money maker. Like I said, it is a very easy and chill and AFK moneymaker. You're just running back and forth between the bank and the anvil to make these rune two hand swords. And not only is it decent money, but we'll also be getting a nice chunk of smithing XP as well. So if we ever decide to go for 200 mil in smithing, this is probably the method that I will be using. Of course, I could do blast furnace or some other mining or smithing method that is a lot faster, but I tend to choose the more AFK options when it comes to training my skills. 
most of the 99s that I have are from training with the AFK methods. And who knows, maybe in a future video, I will explain what I did to max out all of my stats. And maybe one of these days, I'll go ahead and make an Iron Man and max out that account as well. In the past, I made a hardcore Iron Man that lasted about a day, I'd say. I managed to get around 50 fire making, I believe, and whatever wood cutting level I got along with that. For Winter Todd, I went over to the cake stalls in Ardoin to get some food for, of course, Winter Todd. And I looked away because I was training on my main account. And next thing I know, I was in Lumbridge dead with my hardcore status revoked. So apparently, the guards there that I thought I had trapped somehow became untrapped when I wasn't looking and they knocked me out. And that was the end of my Iron Man run. I did never touch the account again and I never trained. I said to myself that if I do an, a hardcore Iron Man account ever again, that I need to pay full attention to it. And now that I am finally maxed on the main, maybe I can finally devote some time to focusing on a hardcore Iron Man. So let me know what you think about that. I am still, however, doing stuff on the main. Currently, I'm just pet hunting. And speaking of pet hunting, the next video that I'm working on will be taking some time. I'm investing more than one hour in this particular video, and I'll explain why in the said video. But basically, it's just to give me more time on killing a certain boss. I know that there are a lot of bosses that have been asked for in the past for these types of videos, and doing one hour on each one really wouldn't do it justice, especially if the GP per hour relies on one item drop. So for instance, if I decide to do Callisto, one hour of Callisto, it really wouldn't be accurate because the price or the, I should say the GP per hour there is heavily reliant on the dragon pick drop. So I feel like doing a 10 hour video on that boss would be more suitable. But getting back to the video, there's really not much to say about this. I mean, it was pretty chill the entire time. And again, it's a nice way to train smithing. In terms of banking, the bank fillers do help out, especially if you use the all option, just so you can withdraw all of the runite bars and so you can deposit all of the rune two hand swords. I also use the escape key to close the bank interface so I don't have to drag the mouse all the way. And um, I suppose you don't even have to use that. You could just click on the mini map on the anvil. I do have to say though, the update where they added the quantity options on the smithing interface was a total help because before you had to of course open up the interface and then right click on the item and then left click on the make all option. So this definitely speeds up how many runite items you can make per hour, which therefore leads to more smithing XP and more GP per hour. Besides the 99 smithing requirement that you will need for this moneymaker, you'll also need a good amount of money. I believe I spent close to around 35 mil on the bars used in this video. Of course, I didn't use all of them, but I do like to buy more than I think I'll need, just so I won't have to stop the one hour of the video. Now, a very big tip whenever you are doing this moneymaker, especially if you're planning to do this long term, is to join the CC W308 Anvil. In this CC, people will buy your runite items for usually more than what you can get on the GE. I decided to join the CC and try to sell off the runite items that I had, but after around 10 minutes, no one really responded to the messages here at the bank or in the CC, so I, I'm assuming it'll take a while. I mean, uh, these people probably have a lot of rune items already, but again, if you plan to make a lot of runite items, it might be worth it to join the CC and just advertise how many items you are selling. When you deal with high volume amounts, every little GP extra that you can get is a huge boost to the amount of money that you can get. Now of course you already saw how many runite items that I managed to make in this one hour from the past video or the past clip and now we can just do a little price check to see how much all of it is worth and it is close to 35.5 mil. As I stated earlier in the video you will be needing a lot of money to do this money maker for long periods of time but I mean if you keep doing it you'll eventually have a nice cash stack and you won't have to leave this area for a good amount of time. So we put them in the GE for the market price since we couldn't sell them in the CC and they instantly sold, but I'm not too upset about that. We did manage to make more than what the wiki suggested. So we still managed to make more money than what was originally thought. But again, if you plan to do this moneymaker for long periods of time, go ahead and sell them in the CC. I'm sure you'll find someone who will buy them all at once after some time. We can now go ahead and go to the next screen to calculate the total profit that we made from this one hour. And I just gotta say, I really love this little screenshot right here of Priftinus. They did a really good job on the city. I think it looks great. 
and again I've never actually been to this area before making this video so that was kind of a treat. So if we subtract the total amount of money that we spent on bars which was 35,102,637 GP from the total amount of money that we made which was 35,564,412 GP we get a grand total profit of 461,775 GP from one hour of smithing ruin to end swords. Now we also managed to get a nice amount of smithing XP totaling 211,275 XP. I just want to say thanks for checking out the video and if you did enjoy it please consider giving it a thumbs up and possibly a subscription and as always I will catch you guys in the next episode.